Solving quadratic inequalities is quite straightforward, but we're going to use a graphing to help us do this. We looked at this a little bit already in exercise 2a, so today we're just taking it a step further. Step 1, put everything onto one side. I've written here the left hand side because that probably makes it easier to use the same method every time so that you get into a routine. Now what we want to do is sketch y equals the left hand side and then read the solution of the graph. So one thing we've already seen is that, if, is that if you're sketching y equals the right hand side, well if you've put everything onto one side, the right hand side should be just 0, shouldn't it? So you're really sketching y equals 0. No need to sketch that, that's basically the x-axis. And that's already on your sketch, so you've really sketched that just by drawing up one of these. It's ready to go here. So what you're really doing then, if all this other stuff is on the left hand side, you're seeing when the curve y equals all of that is dipping above or below this line. So two simple examples here. Put everything onto the left hand side, all right, let's subtract 9 from both sides here. Now what we want to do is we want to graph y equals x squared minus 9 and we want to see where that is sitting above y equals 0. Now you don't strictly need to write these two lines, I'm just here thinking with my pen showing you what I should be thinking about. Now I can factorise this pretty easily, this is y equals x plus 3, x minus 3. Now by having that in both forms, I've got two bits of information. When I look at it like this, I can think, that's a parabola, y equals x squared, that's just been moved down 9. And that helps me draw it really quickly and easily like this and know that it's going to go through minus 9. Not that I really need to know that, but it's, it's, that information is coming to me. When I look at it like this, I know that if I let y equal 0, x will be 3 or minus 3. And so that helps me put the important parts on the graph really quickly and easily. Sketching y equals 0, well I've already done that, that's the x axis. So what my question is saying is, when is my parabola greater than or higher than 0? So that means it's up here. This is the part that it's sort of above ground, if you think this is above ground or below ground. Easy way to think of it. And these are the parts that I want. Now, notice there was no y at all in this part. And yet I've graphed it on a Cartesian plane that has x and y values as a trick to help me because it's just simply the easiest way to do it and get it right. The x values I want are either greater than 3 or less than minus 3, so that's my solution. Solution is x has to be less than minus 3 or greater than 3. Now it can't be both of those things at the same time, so the answer has two parts. Moving on now to a more complicated one. Put everything onto the, le the left hand side. Now, if I do that, I'm going to have minus x squared over there, and I, I don't really enjoy factorising with minus x squared. So I'm thinking I should really put subtract x and 6 from both sides and put everything on this side. Well, if you want to write all of your bits and pieces on the left, I could still write all of that over there, couldn't I? But if I've had swapped everything to the other side, I need to just flip the sign. So I'm just going to do this step slowly, x squared, if I subtract x and subtract 6 from both sides, I'm going to get that with a 0 on the other side. But since these two have come to the same side as the x squared, it's the x squared is on the little side, I need to keep my sign pointing to this way so that the x squared is still on the little side. Alright, this is also a parabola, so it's going to be something like this one. If I go ahead and factorise it, notice I'm factorising it straight away, I'm not writing y equals. This is something that you can think through in the beginning, but after a while you won't need to write it. You can actually just think, all right, I'm going to factorise this. Two numbers that multiply to minus 6 and add to minus 1, so I need plus 2 and minus 3. So what I'm looking at here is a parabola with zeros at minus 2 and 3, because if, after all, if I said I'm graphing y equals all of this, and I let y equal 0, then those would be my um, zeros. Now this thing is an upright parabola, I can tell because it's x squared, not minus x squared, so I'm graphing it this way. And I want the part where the parabola is smaller than the line y equals 0. In other words, I want this part here that's below ground, as I like to think of it. So what are the x values that are down there? Well, they're the x values between minus 2 and 3, and they can be equal to them as well. 
So my solution looks like this. Now you might be thinking, what would have happened if I brought everything onto this side and factorised it the other way around? Wouldn't I have had an upside down parabola? I would have. Let's grab another colour. We would have had minus x squared plus x plus 6 and we would have had to say that all of that is greater than or equal to 0. Now what would have happened is when we graphed this it would be an upside down parabola but guess which points it would be going through? Minus 2 and 3 because if I factorise this I'm still going to get those same two zeros. And we would have been finding the bit where the parabola is greater than or equal to zero, which is still this section here that has x values between these two points. So you can see it doesn't matter too much which way around you do it, but if you've got some consistency and work with things that are easy, factorising that is harder than factorising this one. So work with something that's, that's easy to factorise and you'll get your answer nice and quickly.